question and guy that you kind of moonlight with is Daniel Jacobs. There's been some, uh, I don't know, talk about Jamal Tarlow possibly having to face him. Uh, his brother Jamel came out, did an interview with my Las Vegas correspondent over the weekend and said that that's a fight that they're looking at for the future. What do you think of Jamal, who obviously has some business to take care of here in Brooklyn um, this weekend, but we're expecting him to get that win. What do you think of Jamal Charlo versus Daniel Jacobs in the future? Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to talk to my brother here. <laughs> he does, he's the majority of the Daniel Jacobs. The majority Jacobs. shareholder in Daniel <laughs> Jacobs. <laughs> have you heard that rumor or interview? Because it's not a rumor. I mean, it is Jamel Charlo saying that his brother will have to face Daniel Jacobs in the future. So um, what's your thoughts on that matchup? Well, honestly, I think that Danny is the number one middleweight on this planet right now. And I think that the fight with him and Charlo would be super duper exciting. But Danny, once again, Number one middleweight, and he's a big middleweight. And I think it'll be just a little too much for him, and Danny would uh, eventually stop him. Now, speaking of number one middleweight, um, Jamal Charlo will be having that uh, Sebastian Highland fight to become the number one contender to face the WBC. Obviously, Daniel Jacobs has, uh, you know, some a rivalry there. We're gonna go ahead and to be continued. All right, so it was a be, be continued interview. The question was more along the lines like, since Jamal is fighting to be the mandatory and Daniel feels he won the fight with uh, Gennady Golovkin, does that Jamal Charlo versus Jacobs fight make more sense? Because one is going the sanctioning body route and you know, kind of mandating that he gets a shot at the champion. The other one is, feels that he deserves a shot due to the controversial decision of the fight. Well, I honestly believe if Charlo wins the fight on the 29th, uh, he would not be risking anything in, in lieu of actually boxing in that championship fight against the winner of Canelo Triple G. And I wouldn't blame him for that. But if the powers that be position is about to actually take place and we get the chance to compete against him, we certainly will. And our days are truly numbered at 160. We're, we're not going to be at 160 very long. And these are the heydays, whereas the next couple of fights, if that many, we're going to participate in, and then we're moving up to 68. So whoever might fall into that category at this point in time, we will be ready, willing, and able, and then we'll move on to 68. Speaking of 68, um, did you at least contemplate having Daniel Jacobs maybe uh, be in that tournament? Obviously, it's too late now, but the World Boxing Super Series with all those super middleweights, and they have two, two 68 titles in that tournament. Which was that a true. thought? Did you guys think about it? It's, it certainly was a thought, but Danny feels he has unfinished business with Triple G, and he wants that. But if it should not have happen in the next year or so, we're definitely going to be making the move in 68. And is it a win or lose thing with Triple G, regardless of his fight with Canelo? Does Jacob still want that rematch just to avenge the loss? Or is it he wants the winner? He, he would love the winner, but he wants to definitely avenge the loss. But he wants the winner of the Canelo Triple G. All right, Andre, thank you so much. And uh, I guess I wish you guys the best with Terry Arnold Johnson and Survey Derechenko. I mean, unless you want to get the site in the game, see the boxing boys.